This is my friend, Sheila. Sheila is from Australia. She is a Woma python, or as they say in Australia, a Waima. <laughs> Any of you who've seen the crocodile hunter, he would call her a Waima python. But uh, we call her a Woma python, W-O-M-A. And Woma pythons are from Australia and they are desert dwellers. And she is really friendly. She's, she's checking around. She's trying to figure out what's going on. What is he doing? Are people watching me? <laughs> she is a, a, a desert dwelling python and you can see her eyes are really big and they're really dark. She's got the, like these built-in sunglasses. Really dark, large eyes which help her see even in the super duper hot sand of Australia. And uh, this pattern that you see also helps her blend in to, come on, Sheila, come on, stretch out, girl. <laughs> if I can get her to stretch out, you'll see how this, this pattern helps her blend into the sand. It kind of looks like lines in the sand. If you've ever been on a sand dune, you can see like ripples in the sand. And so she is from a super hot, arid, dry climate. And out in, the, uh, in nature, Typically, a Woma python would eat lizards, but in captivity, lizards are really hard to come by, to feed animal or f to feed snakes. So we just, we feed them mice. So she has been fed mice ever since I got her. I've had her for at least two years and I got her as a tiny little baby. And now she's definitely getting a lot bigger. She's at least twice as big as she was when I first got her. And Woma pythons are really unusual in the sense that they're one of the few pythons on earth that they have heat pits just like other pythons but they're hidden normally a heat uh, a python on the side of its jaw has heat pits here where you can see little holes in their scales because they have this organ this heat sensing organ in their face that helps them to determine is there an animal, a warm-blooded animal like a mouse or, you know, some other prey item nearby? And they can literally figure out where that animal is, even in pitch black darkness. They don't need their ability to see in order to feed, which is good because most pythons have terrible eyesight, Sheila included. Her eyesight is not good. But her heat pits in her jaw, they're hidden behind these little scales on the sides of, her, of her, her mouth, on her lips. That's very uncommon. Usually you can spot a python immediately by looking and seeing these little heat pits on the side. But for her, they're hidden. And again, like I said, she's got these big dark eyes, really dark. They're so dark you can't even see the retina or the pupil. They just look like big black circles. If, you, if I took her outside and showed you in the daylight, you'd be able to see under intense sunlight, you'd see her whole eyeball. But uh, with just lights like these, you, you really can't tell. So she's a female and she, as I mentioned, she's super friendly, very docile. She's very, uh, she loves to explore and she likes to just kind of hang around and see what's going on. She's always climbing, you know, crawling and slithering around my body and my arm. And, you know, if I set her down for a minute or two, she'd be gone for sure. But one thing that's interesting that's a little bit different for her is despite being a desert python, she actually has a really prehensile tail. So this, this is what you'd call a prehensile tail, which is something that like a possum or some other creatures like that would have where they can hook their tail around a branch or a rock or something like that and hold their whole bodies with their tail. And so she can do that too, which is pretty uncommon for a desert creature. Um, all of my tree dwelling, my arboreal snakes can do that, but uh, I have a, a couple desert uh, snakes that can't do that, but she can. So that's really interesting. So she lives in a super hot, super dry, arid climate. And, uh, but but she's kind of a, a thick bodied, a sort of a thicker bodied python. She has a very aggressive feeding response. So in the, the reptile world, we don't like to say that she is um, 
bitey or anything like that. But if she smells food and you open her tank, her head is coming out because she is excited to feed. Um, so I'm really careful with my hands around her when it's feeding time because if she thinks I'm feeding her, she is going to be striking. But obviously when you can, yeah, I mean, you can see her right now. When she knows it's not feeding time and she doesn't smell food in the air, she, uh, she's very friendly, very docile. She's sticking her tongue out here because she's doing what all snakes do. And hopefully you can see that. She's, she's sticking out her tongue. Uh, and what snakes do is they have something in the top of their mouth called a Jacobson's organ. And a Jacobson's organ helps them to smell. It's kind of like smelling. It's not exactly smelling, but it's like smelling. And so she can't really smell with her nose. She can breathe with her nose, but can't really smell with her nose. But instead, if she sticks her tongue out, her tongue will be able to sort of taste the air and taste chemicals in the air and then pull that tongue back in. And that Jacobson's organ on the roof of her mouth will be able to tell her there's food over in this direction or there's water over in this direction. So Sheila, the Australian Woma Python, when she gets to be older, uh, she could be up to six feet long. We'll see if that ever happens. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how long she'll get to be, but I mean, I got her when she was probably 12 inches long, and now she's. I mean, she's got to be at least twice that. So, Sheila is a, a blast. I really like Sheila. She is super fun to have in my collection. Very friendly. Say bye, Sheila. Bye.